everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this week's Weekly Energy Boost. My name is Ellie Sheva, and I am here at this beautiful Monday morning with David, and we are so looking forward to sharing with you the spiritual insights into trust, building trust, rebuilding trust, and healing the relationships where trust has been broken. It's a very uh, sexy topic and very <laughs> lots of uh, juicy, I don't know, I think it's it's something that's very prevalent in these times. It's also really a beautiful opportunity in this week and of course this month to tackle this issue. We are, Our trust issues may be, our trust buttons may be pushed uh, from time to time and it's a beautiful week to focus in on the spiritual understanding and the tools that we can use to both strengthen our trust and rebuild trust. Weekly Energy Boost is a seven-day spiritual weather forecast where David and I and sometimes our guests glean through the wisdom of Kabbalah and share the most powerful and practical tools to help our listeners navigate the coming seven days. At the, at the end of every episode, you're sure to take away wisdom and tools that you can use any, any day, anytime, anywhere. And obviously, this is no different um, what's interesting about this particular week is that we've been in the Omer. We haven't really talked much about it in the last couple of weeks, but the, the Omer is the time of the year in which the universe tests us and, and gives us uh, virtual reality opportunities. I say virtual reality opportunities because they're rarely real and lasting, but they are opportunities to see, to test our spiritual prowess. How much have we grown? How much have we risen above and elevated our old limited tendencies. And this week is no different. This week is a bit different because we have a peak in the energy, uh, uh, I would say a uh, relief a little bit this week as the energy begins to turn upward. And that's also important. But I think when we, when we talk about trust the, the word as Kabbalists we use is usually certainty. In the conversation, I, well, actually, I should say this. David mentioned last week the power of studying with another person, talking to another person, opening up to another person. And I happen to be studying with someone this, this topic of um, trust and certainty and uh, really what the, the not only spiritual benefits of trust in the creator, but also the physical, there's physical benefits. And what's interesting is there is a lot of um, peace of mind, relaxation, serenity that's promised. What's interesting is that the, the Kabbalists opened that conversation saying, imagine you have a friend that you can trust and you know with 100% of your being, you can trust them, right? What does that trust bring you? The same thing, peace of mind, calm, serenity, you know someone has your back, you feel protected, you feel guided. And so when we look at the concept of trust, which is a big conversation in this week's section of Zohar, it's, it's something that the Kabbalists talk about as well, as far as you know, finding the right people in your life to be connected to, you want to know that you can trust them, that they're not going to betray you, um, go back on their word, um, humiliate you, right? You want to know that there is a, a bond between you that, that will, that will endure. I'll say it's not temporary, it's lasting. And so there is a beautiful parallel between the relationships that we desire to have with other people and the relationship that we're meant to have with the creator. So I think as we go into this week of the Omer and, um, on, on two, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we have uh, Tuesday night to Wednesday night, we have this beautiful cosmic window that opens that allows us to fill up our tanks and be, be nourished by a very powerful energy that will sustain us for the next few weeks. So we want to be super mindful of those opportunities, both to trust, to heal those bonds, and also to strengthen our trust with the creator, with the light force of the creator. When we talk about trust, there's two types of trust that a person should aim for. Number one, very simply, and King David said this, that a person should trust that whatever is happening to his or her life at this very moment is exactly what the Creator has intended for this person. And so before we try to fix it, optimize it, 
change it, add to it. Before we do anything about it, we need to, we need to realize and trust that this is exactly as it should be, first and foremost. And when you connect with that certainty, that trust, that belief, that acceptance, you enter a world that we call the tree of life, you access the light of the creator, that then guides you and tells you what to do with this situation. So it's not that the situation is meant to be, to be mutable and, and non-changing. It's that the situation is meant to change, but only after you accept it. If you jump the process, if you skip right to changing the situation without accepting it, you're now doing so from the limitation of the body consciousness and as we call the ego. And so this is why people make wrong decisions. They say the wrong things. They, they, they cause the process to be much longer than it needs to be. Only through trust and acceptance of a situation do you guarantee that you receive the right message for the best outcome. But the second level of trust is actually a higher level, and it's the one I believe most, most of us have an issue with. And that is, it's one thing to trust the Creator and to work on trusting the Creator, that everything that is happening is meant to happen, it's for my good, and so I'm not going to be in pain about it. But how many of us believe that the Creator trusts in us? This is actually a very deep, deep concept because most people think that it's just a one-way street. I have this responsibility and I have this duty to the universe, to the Creator, to other people. But be, many of us do not believe that the Creator trusts in us. And as a result, we are subconsciously blocking that relationship. And we are subconsciously blocking wisdom and goodness and miracles to come in. Again, you trusting the creator is one thing. The cr believing that the creator trusts in you and believes in you. Because a lot of times the mistakes that we make are from our own low self-esteem. And what is low self-esteem? It's the sub, sub, subconscious thought that the creator doesn't really believe in me. So who cares? I can just do whatever I want. I'm not really responsible. You see children who come from broken homes and, and, and many of them lead broken lives. It's because nobody believes, they think nobody believes in them. And they never had good mentors or good parents that believed in them, that trusted in them, even if they trusted in other people. And so we are all kind of, from a broken spiritual home because we do not believe that the creator trusts in us. And, and how do you do that? I and just in, in a morning meditation and throughout the day, I say out loud, I trust in the creator and I know that the creator trusts in me. And I say it over and over again because if you believe it, you establish the connection. So how can we use that understanding to inform our interpersonal relationships, right? I, I mean, I used an example last week of a woman whose husband left her. Um, there are a lot of situations that, I, I, it doesn't even have to be in romantic relationships, it can be in friendship, it can be professional relationships. I mean, I remember a number of years ago, we had somebody that was working for us and we were set to renew contract and we said, Are you, you know, you're here for the long haul. And he said, absolutely, at least the next three years. The following month, he presented us with a letter of resignation. Mm. So how do we, not, I mean, that's a, maybe a less, you know, serious or a, I know that sometimes, just as an, another funny example, my kids last year, their teacher, one of their teachers left in the middle of the year. And that was really hard. It was really hard for them to digest that, like someone that they had, spent time with, felt cared by, could just walk away from them. And how do you learn to trust again? Actually, one of my, one of my kids said, how do I know the next teacher isn't just going to quit after two weeks? Yeah. So that, that cynicism is something we all experience, right? Uh, we go through a, a friendship burns out or 
Um, I just, there's so many examples. It doesn't have to be marriage. It can be just in the day to day. How do we not become cynical and bitter when people are so untrustworthy? <laughs> right, 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 right. Unpredictable and uh, un, and un, not dependable. Not dependable. I, I would say that number one, it's not. It's it's never. None of us like having things taken away from us. You know, we, we, we enjoy our stuff. We enjoy whatever it is in our lives. We get pleasure from them. We have sometimes even an addiction to them. And then when someone takes away our toy, like we, we get hurt and upset and we feel a void. And that's all of us. All of us are like that. What's the, what's the solution here? Just go through life investing in things and having them taken away and go through pain and time heals and move on and the next thing. So very much what, what it has to be and what, what Rav Ashlag from the lineage of great Kabbalists, what he says is that a person must realize that you have to have two relationships and the only consistent one is the creator. Every other relationship is going to be inconsistent, but that's okay because you have the consistent one. When you have the consistent relationship, the creator, which is, you know, the creator is the only thing in this world that will not disappoint you. King David said, all men, all people will disappoint you, which means that inevitably, yes, this one's going to say something you don't like. This one's going to leave you. This one's going to hurt you. This one's going to cheat on you. Whether it's, nefarious, intentional or not, it's going to happen. And it happens actually for a spiritual reason, which is to push us towards the only consistent relationship, which is the creator. The problem is we, we get into this negative feedback loop that we invest in people. It works. We enjoy it. And so we think that's what we need to keep doing. And the reason why people leave us is to push us towards developing a relationship with the creator, the only consistent thing that exists in our lives. That is the most powerful thing you said in, in, in two hours, time, in two hours. No, really the idea that, that I think it's not only with people when situations disappoint us, when investments go bad, when, when things, plans change, all of those disappointments are really there to push us toward having a greater investment in our relationship with the creator. That's the one thing that doesn't change. And the practice that we experience in having relationships with other human beings, to me, there's two things to remember there. One is that within every single human being, there is a spark of the light force of the creator every single human being, whether we can see it, whether it's shining, whether we feel affinity with it or not, every person on the planet is has that goodness within them. And every single person on the planet, when they, as soon as they step into our lives, they become a part of that movie. I actually, I was reading an article recently and um, it was, they made reference to the movie, The Truman Show. Yeah. Right? Old so, famous movie. Old, old movie old movie, I don't know, maybe 20 years old, hmm. um, where basically Truman's life is a Hollywood production. And back then we were so excited about it because it helped us for people who saw the movie as Kabbalah teachers, for people who saw the movie, it helped them understand that that's literally every single person's life, except the universe, the creator is the production company and every single person's movie is orchestrated specifically for them. So at some point in the movie, one of the characters asked, um, like the producer, somebody said behind the scenes, how, co how come he doesn't realize that this is all a production? Like it's, it's all a farce. And they said, you know, you, you, I forget exactly the words, but you believe you, you re you choose to see the reality you want to see. And that to me is an important dimension. First of all, remembering that the people who are in our movie are in our movie for a reason. And if we're experiencing betrayal or abandonment or whatever it is, that too serves a divine purpose. But also what we are, if our consciousness determines our reality, what we perceive is what's being created. So if I look at 
the situation as another proof that I'm unlovable or nobody wants to be around me or I can't have a a long-term relationship, I am literally creating that reality. So this week, when it comes to examining our relationships and the degree of trust that we can have in them, first of all, it's an opportunity to say, where can I build greater trust? Knowing that it's not just about me and that other person, it's about me and my closeness with the creator and my growth toward being more connected to the light force of the creator in my life, but also recognizing, and this is probably, we don't go there enough, but one of the most difficult personal, uh, I'm going to say interpersonal, meaning within me, I think it's interopersonal conversation is to ask, am I trustworthy? How am I showing up in my relationships? Do I say I'm going to be there and I don't show up? Do I say I'm unconditionally there for you and I don't answer the phone when you call? Am I willing to have those uncomfortable and difficult conversations with the people that I care about? Because it's not about physically showing up in someone's life is not only about physically being there. It's, are you truly present? Are you listening? Are you open? And, and anytime the universe gives us an opportunity to grow in a specific area of our lives, it, the growth is both ways. How can I trust more and how can I be more trustworthy? And there's certain, it's, it's ironic and it's not that this opportunity falls in the month of Taurus because the, the sign of Taurus is known to be one of the most trustworthy and loyal signs of the Zodiac. If not the, if, if you, I, I think maybe it's a competition between Leo's and Taurus's, but I think Taurus's mm. might win that, that commitment and dedication is natural for them. They are solid. They are there. I don't know if they want the uncomfortable conversation so much. They, they're not so, so, uh, comfort huggers. They're, they're not, they're not there for the, the discomfort, but knowing that we can borrow when any, any month of the year, we get to infuse ourselves with the positive qualities of that sign, knowing this is actually a week and a month that we can grow in our trust and in our ability to be trusted, to be trustworthy, to be consistent, to show up for people in our lives in a very, uh, Torian way. So that's very exciting. But at the same time, I want to make sure that we're also talking, David, to the people who have been betrayed and who have all the reason in the world not to trust. I gave a good example last week of of someone that I knew who was deeply and publicly betrayed and with, with time was able to open herself up and open her heart up again. I can tell you for my own in my own experience, I'm not very quick to turn around and trust. I definitely, I, I, um, I need time and I need, it's almost like to, to heal. So maybe we can share with our listeners some tools for healing, for staying open, for embracing those moments where trust is broken or we feel let down or betrayed. I think that that's a great question. And When a person is severely betrayed, what they need to know that this is tantamount to death and there's a grieving process that needs to, that needs to happen. There are the stages of grief that a person must go through to heal. And I think one of the mistakes that people make is they skip that process or they avoid it or they take too long in it. They stay too long in the stages. If practically what I've learned when something like this happens is, uh, and we talked about this last week, I, I align myself with one, two, maybe three people that I trust that I know would be experts in this. And I would say, Hey, hold my hand and guide me through this process as quick as possible without, without jeopardizing the integrity of the process. I know I'm going to go through pain. And one of my favorite favorite uh, lines I tell myself is just a brace for impact. Like you're going to go through pain, brace for impact, align yourself with people who are strong and smart in this area and just go through it because you're going to have to go through it. And there's spiritual lessons to be learned by going through it. That's cannot be avoided. And having a philosophy discussion with yourself about why it happened and it shouldn't have happened. The blaming all this, all this is just going to waste your time and your energy. 
and it's gonna it's gonna set you back. This plane is going down. Well, we also this, don't well, have this plane is going down. The why did it happen is really not in our purview. 99% of the time. We don't get to know why, why did I deserve this? How did I create this from a spiritual point of view? We don't have access to those files. Well, a person can understand spiritually what, what, what about them drew it in their lives. But this also needs to be just part of a, a, a fun process of learning and understanding so you don't repeat the mistake. But I would approach this the way I would approach any kind of, any kind of uh, challenge, you got to approach it with a sense of, of, of duty, of grit, of um, and, and spiritual maturity. You are going to go through pain. When people call me and say, okay, this person has left me. It's really bad. They're seeing somebody else. The first thing I tell them is, okay, listen to me very carefully. You know, like these movies, like... I remember this scene from ta ta takeovers. Yeah, this scene from Taken comes in my mind, <laughs> where Liam Neeson's like, "Listen to me very carefully. They are going to take you. <laughs> they are going to take you, and these people are very bad people. They're going to take you." And so when I get that phone call and says, "You know, she left me. He left me. This happened. That happened. I lost the deal." I say, "Listen to me very carefully. You are going to suffer greatly in the coming weeks." You need to accept that. You need to not run away from that. I'm not calling you the next time yeah. I'm in pain. Well, what do you? <laughs> this is this is our job. Our job is to prepare them for that. There's no, there's no running because if they bypass that process, then they'll just have to repeat the process. Right. And I think that was part of what I was I was angling for last week is that um, I had a I shared a conversation I had with somebody earlier that week and she had. Um, was blaming herself for choices she made when she was um, younger. And part of the acceptance process is pain, to your point. It's not going to change if we don't accept where we are or where we were, and that can be painful. I think one of the Kabbalists, I remember reading uh, a quote, something like, the most painful thing a, uh, the most painful thing a person can do is take responsibility for their negativity. That's the thing that we're all busy avoiding, numbing, self-medicating is the, the painful process of taking responsibility for needing the challenging situations in our lives. And so I think first and foremost, what David said about, you know, bracing yourself for impact is that the embracing of it is what speeds up the process, that there is actually a benefit in facing the music. And that is the, the song is going to be much shorter. What delays and prolongs the process is when we resist it. What do they say? What we resist persists. That, mm. that if we avoid something, it tends to drag it out and draw it out to a much longer process. Um, there was something else you said that made me want to chime in and I, I held my tongue and now I Brace can't for remember. impact. Brace for impact. Uh, You're going to suffer. Oh, I know what it is. Though you, you were saying you call somebody... One of the things that I have found is so uber effective in helping us through these difficult processes, especially when it comes to um, loving again or being open again to trust someone, is to fall back on the people and the relationships we do really feel that trust. So whether it's family or good friends or your partner, when you, one way to remember that there is a spark inside of everyone is to go to the people who sparks you see clearly and you feel clearly. I, I am um, in my own different struggles. I've had friends who have been there for me and, you know, maybe we don't talk every day or every week, but we are there for each other when things are difficult and that there, there really is nothing in the same way that we know that the light force of the creator is there for us to have a human being that's a, that is there for us to that with that degree of consistency is really powerful. And I, I, I know that I can do better, but that's really what I try to hold myself to is wanting to be the type of person that even if we don't talk every single day, that the people who I'm close to know that I will be there no matter what. And I want to draw from that this week as well, get my level up in my trustworthiness and in the way that I show up for people. Um, David, is there anything you want to share about the energy this week? Lagba Omer, the Omer, you always have such deep and juicy nuggets for our listeners. Well, I think, uh, what, 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 when uh, this is on Monday, Lagba Omer is Monday, Monday night. night, yeah, Monday tonight, night. tonight. 
So I, I was going to say that um, there are windows in time we can take advantage of. If people want to learn more about them, they can obviously go on Kabbalah.com. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a plethora of, of information there. But I'll say that tonight there is a gate, a gate that's open for all of us to get a glimpse into our future and to receive a support system from the upper worlds to move through our correction process and any painful situation that we're going through, to receive protection, to receive clarity, to receive strength. And this energy opens up tonight around uh, nightfall and will extend for 25 hours with the most powerful of it being between midnight and dawn tonight. So it's just something to keep in mind because this energy does exist and, and maybe even to join us live wherever you are in the world, listening, to stream with us, to make the connection, because this energy will uh, benefit us greatly for the whole year. I just want to end with a, a thought or um, a concept that might help us navigate the coming days and weeks. And by the way, if you're hearing this later in the week and you miss that window in time, know that that window is so powerful that it literally punctures <laughs> the, the sack of mud that we've all been carrying these last few weeks and it really lightens the load and it begins to, um, the energy begins to increase as we lead up to another cosmic window we're going to hit in a few weeks and we'll talk more about that soon called Shavuot. It's, I think, um, I actually can't think off the top of my head and don't want to check the calendar. But what I wanted to share as a, as a, I'm going to call it a, a beacon or as a lighthouse for us in the coming, coming week is that there is a phrase that the Kabbalists refer to. It's actually a, a, a section in the Bible that says the creator is your shadow. And what that means for us is that the, the universe will meet us where we are at. And that can be very uncomfortable sometimes when the universe is trying to show us how we're falling short of who we can be. And one of the things that I've noticed, especially when it comes to friendships and relationships that are not your partner, not your exclusive partner, is that those relationships the universe often uses to show us where, where, where we need to grow. And if you've been in a situation recently where somebody that you trusted or that was important to you or that you thought it was going in one direction and you were surprised or disappointed or let down, if you can come up with a succinct description of what they did that let you down or that disappointed you, I am sure, not because I'm an expert, but because the wisdom of Kabbalah teaches us that if there is something that was done to you that bothered you, you have done it or you're doing it as well to someone else. So if you feel like you're being criticized, if you feel like somebody who, um, you know, you thought it was going well with, now you're getting the cold shoulder, look in your own life for where you're feeling you're getting the cold shoulder or where you're letting someone else down. And the moment that you recognize it, the moment you get it right, so to speak, and you start to transform that, you don't need the pain and the burden of that painful situation anymore because the, the universe uses our relationships to communicate the turns and the detours in our own spiritual journey. So that if you've been working on something and you forget about it and you start to slow down, the universe will give you a, a hard right to make by a person disappointing you or challenging you or, or betraying you. And that is one of the most powerful wake up calls, right? It's not a healing crisis. It's not life or death. It's, it's an emotional struggle, but sometimes those emotional struggles are the best ones to go through because you get to decide how much damage actually happens. You get to decide the, the wreckage based on how it leaves you and how you get to choose if you're destroyed by it or if you grow by it. So hopefully not only this week, but in these remaining uh, two and a half, three weeks that we have left of the Omer, we will use those opportunities, those buttons that get pushed to grow and to transform rather than to feel betrayed or disappointed or defeated. 
Weekly Energy Boost is available on all podcast platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also find us, we have a website, weeklyenergyboost.com, where we often share different links and, and ideas and books, people that we want our listeners to learn about. You can also click the donate button at weeklyenergyboost.com to support our podcast. And as always, please continue to like, rate, review, and share. If you haven't reviewed the podcast, please do that. It helps us get in, get in front of, of more devices and faces and of course, ears and hearts and souls. So we thank you for continuing to share and support us. And we'll see you next week on the Weekly Energy Boost. Mm-hmm.